Well, basically, I lost the video audio again for the original video, <laughs> which is a pain in the backside. Anyway, you see me attacking a winter garden here, conservatory in Germany in, in March. The weather was really good, perfect conditions. It was dry and it was relatively cool to mild. mild. And what you're seeing me doing here is I'm starting off on the inside of, uh, I'm throwing a spreadsheet down there. If you're using, um, if you're doing the insides, I recommend you get yourself some big spreadsheets. Anything will do, but something that's easy to manoeuvre. And starting off um, doing the inside of the conservatory, what I recommend you do is you um, get yourself some pouches for holding your cloths. And you want to put three or four cloths in there. And uh, you want to pre-spray everything on the inside with a, um, a good sprayer. Just you, I would recommend um, using a mild cleaner or water. Because if you have got any harsh chemicals, they could go on walls or furniture furniture and damaged surfaces so you've got to make sure that everything around you is um, covered really that's the best way so get yourself a big cover anyway look i'm showing you how to close out here with deep frames this is um this the audio's lost so basically i'm going this this closing out on the frame which is a little bit of stress on your wrist i mean if you've got to do like 30 so what I do, what I generally do is, is this second method here. If you can just run your cloth over the seals, so they prevent too much detailing. So what I've done there is I've closed out midway and le left a line, and I just go from the outwards inwards to detail it. Okay, so that's a little tip there. <clears throat> you, as you can see here, you can get a good grasp of the deep frames, which are really solid German build. Not thin like you get in the UK, sorry about that. And um, as you see also I'm using a small squeegee, which is my much preferred um, squeegee size of a 30 centimetre. Um, if I was cleaning big glass I would get, probably use a 45 centimetre. But um, I could pole this, but if you pole it you've still got to wipe the frames down, see. Because um, these are done once a year, and you get a lot of insect. You don't get on this particular one. There's not a lot, but um, sometimes you might get a lot of insect, dirt, dreck, dirt. Mm. Sip of my coffee, lovely. I'm going over there, and I'm just showing you again several methods. You could just squeegee it off, or use straight pulls. It's up to you, really. They're all the same. Make sure you just when you're doing straight pulls, you um, wipe the blade off by each pull. Now I'm on top of the conservatory. And I'm spraying everything that needs, um, I'm doing a pre-wash here, I'm pre-spray, sorry. And I'm spraying everything that looks green or is um, got algae. Because this winter garden, or sorry, this conservatory is actually sitting slightly in the shade and above trees. So it's automatically, automatically going to get green with algae and moss. Yes, moss forms. And this particular winter gun, which is very old, but I would say 20 years old, 25 years old, 30 years even maybe, it's got um, the awnings on the outside. Now, most modern conservatories have the awnings built on the underneath of the glass, so they rarely, rarely get any dirt. It's just a little bit of moss, uh, sorry, a little bit of dust, which is fantastic, but it's a different kettle of fish when the awning is on the outside. Now, this particular awning is um, very old, and um, yeah, it's, it needs to be wiped down um, once a year at least. I'm grabbing all my cloths now and putting them in with my water from a, from a washer. I'm grabbing a few cloths now because I'm going to need more than one because they're that dirty. Um, I don't want to keep going back to that bucket. So what I do is I place about 10 or 12, for example, into my pouch. Then I'm walking on the on the roof, on the um, frames. They're very strong frames. They're built for walking on, so don't worry about that. There's a slight angle on this um, conservatory, though, so you, you want to make sure that um, the frames are dry when you're walking on them for safety reasons. You don't want to walk on wet frames, and I'd never walk on glass, even though I could, because it's safety glass. It's double, doubled. Now, I'm just running my hands. This is hard to narrate here. Um, I'm just running my hands across the um, the frames and everywhere that's got green on it. This this particular winter garden has been um, I, would, I would call it Frankenstein winter garden because the owners 
actually done a lot of repairs on it himself and that that gray thing on the side there is somebody's gone come and done some sort of um waterproof in there i don't know what actually what it is but it's um it's impossible to clean that gray thing there so i left that don't forget i keep coming here once a year so i've now i've just done a pre wash now i'm going over my clean washer and just adding some more water to my washer from a bottle because that's the best method i couldn't use a sprayer here because it will spray all over the glass that i've already cleaned so i'm starting at one side and working my way down and um, basically um, it's all about being industrious here and getting it done with experience so the pre-wash is crucial really i'm just closing out on the bottom um, part of the frame there but i should close out on the side really it's a lot easier Okay, a lot of technical talk here. It's all simple, really. It's just basically experience and a lot of work. And now I'm running, as you can see, it just melting because I've pre-sprayed it all. Um, clean that, the cloth, get underneath, grab the hole of the cloth. It's all handwork. You couldn't use a water-fed pole on this because it just wouldn't do it because it'll spray water all over the glass and frames. You wouldn't be able to walk on it because it'd be too slippy. So you've got to make choices. I have got a water-fed pole and I use it quite often, but that's for things, objects that, um, as you can see here, there's, a, there's um, a groove there at the back. Now, I don't generally always clean that groove because that, it all depends what the customer's paying in the price. So how you clean something is according to what the customer's paying. And this customer's paying so much so i have to do so much of a job and she's happy with that so she's never complained about it so um, she's not a very fussy person I would say so you know that's great so everybody wins but if the person was fussy I would either say no or I would um, really make a high price <clears throat> but I can I am capable of doing fantastic work but um, it, again it all depends what the customer's paying so because um, the job is quite intensive you know especially if um, they haven't been cleaned for four or five years or longer. This one, this particular job, it gets cleaned once a year, but still the algae and the moss comes because that's just the way it is. And the woman knows that, so she, she, um, she's a repeat customer, which is good. Now I'm going over the glass with my hand and I'm doing um, a pre-wash, washing all the seals, as good as it can be. Again, I couldn't... I, couldn't do perfect here. I, I, sh I wouldn't do perfect here because the price is not. It's okay, you know, but it's not fantastic, you know. So I've got to um, make sure that um, I, you know I put myself first and not the. It's just experience talking, you know. So you can make sure that um, the way you work is according to the price. And I've just done the pre squeegee again. I'm only going to do two or three paints to show you what I do and it's basically what it is really you're doing a pre-wash with your hand which is a really accurate way of cleaning it's more accurate than a water-fed pole brush I know what you're saying a water-fed pole brush you get you know it wouldn't we wouldn't be able to get underneath there's not enough room underneath it's just um, yeah so basically um, I've decided to do everything with the hand with certain conservatories it's just easier for me I had to wipe that part of the frame down, what you're seeing now, because um, it got slightly wet. And I was, um, my knee pads, well, I'm using them, quite slippy when they're wet. So just get that done straight away before carrying on. Uh, as long as everything's dry, the white frames that you're seeing, you, you ain't going to slip. And it's, you've got total control everything over everything, you know. So again, squeeze you off. And you'll see me closing out, I think, now on the side. So... Yeah. Right, that's it. Now it's all about being industrious and then I'm detailing off that edge because there's a slight edge there where the water will gather. So um, I'm going down on my knee. I don't use a pole or nothing. I could use a pole, but you can't get in underneath. See, that's the problem, see. So I have to go down on my knees to basically clean this um, awning cast, um, this awning box here, yeah. 
And then while I'm at it, while I'm down on my knees, I may as well squeegee the glass as well. So, you know, instead of getting up and down, up and down, it's all about experience, experience and making choices, yeah. But, um, yeah, water-fed pole would be okay, but only if I didn't have to clean like, underneath there, for example. A water-fed pole wouldn't get underneath that, um, that guide for the awning there. It wouldn't get underneath there. It would be banging against everything, chipping paint off possibly. Um, it probably would clean the seals really good, but um, you know I've got to make choices. So basically, I'm running my hand over the seals again. It's a bit long-winded this video. Right. Okay. So I think we're going to cut it short now, and we're going to go back and carry on to part three or four of me doing other parts of the concealer. You get the gist now, don't you? So using a pre-wash and a very wet cloth. And a pre-spray, you can really cover a lot of ground. But um, if you're just going to use a cloth on something that's not been pre-sprayed, or just run your your clean washer like I am now without doing a pre-wash, then you're going to end up getting a really dirty washer. And you're going to have to keep visiting your bucket. So obviously I haven't got a bucket here, because firstly, you know, it's just too much time consuming, isn't it? So you've got to think of a method to be efficient. And that method, what I'm using, is very efficient. Okay, so now what we've done now is we've completed the inside of the roof, which was relatively easy. The outside of the roof, which is relatively hard, the most hardest part of the window. And now we're doing the easiest part of the conservatory, which is the outside. Now this particular conservatory has had a lot of repairs on it, like I said before. And also, um, you know, you've got to make choices. So it's just a quick clean. I'm just um, running the glass. Uh, sorry, I'm running my T-bar, T-bar washer over the glass. Then I'll quickly wipe the frames down. <coughs> and then clean the glass like every other window cleaner does in the world. I generally, normally, always got a cloth in one hand and the squeegee in the other. In a lot of cases. And um, having pouches for conservatories is a real, a real big help. So um, I know certain window cleaners do not like having a, um, any sort of belt system, but I, could, I can live, live without it myself because I wouldn't know where to put anything. So um, but there are window cleaners in Germany that actually don't use any sort of pouches or anything. They just use the um, squeegee and the washer in their hand with the cloth. And good for them, you know, but um, this is the way I do it. So we're just going to wash all the um, the glass. It's just standard window cleaning now, really. Um, everything from the bucket. Um, the 35 centimetre Mormon is perfect size for this glass. I don't don't generally change squeegee, squeegee sizes. I only use a small one maybe for window sills or a 45 centimetre um, squeegee for large pieces of glass. But um, as you see on on this particular conservatory, I've used the same squeegee and same washer for everything. So there's no need for um, changing, chopping and changing like that. That's just my opinion. And uh, yeah, basic window cleaning. So I'm just going to fast forward to this now a little bit. Okay. So now we've got the last part of the conservatory to do. It's just a small size general basically sized standard conservatory. I'm just going over the glass net. It's still March, the weather's relatively cool. I'm just um, doing like a sort of pre-wash, taking all the um, the main dirt off just quickly. It does help doing a pre-wash, that's my own opinion. But um, I've also applied a small amount of a certain chemical on there as well. Now I've just put putting that back in the bucket and that chemical is like, uh, I would say, uh, a mild um, lime scale remover, so to say. Just a very mild one. Similar to vinegar, I suppose, a vinegar-based cleaner. That was just um, letting that sit now and work on the glass. I'm just run, running my hand across the frame, just touching up a few things here. It's a very old winter garden. I'm just not basically, you know, I'm not really, my heart's not racing or nothing with worry about it what the customer's going to think, because I know what the customer's going to think. They'll accept anything I do, which is really good. So the last thing I want is a fussy, fussy customer. 
So that, that's a double-sided ladder, which you see there, which are very common in Europe. Fantastic ladders. I recommend you get one. They come in all different sizes. That one's got, um, I think it's four steps. And I'm just running my hand across the seals now and just basically um, <clears throat> coming to the end of the job now. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit now and then that'll be it.